Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel. And welcome to our summer campaign of Arkham Horror, the card game. In this campaign, we're going to take on the Circle Undone campaign over the course of the summer. In case you're wondering where the intro video to the campaign is where I introduce you to the investigators, Circle Undone actually has a prologue scenario that you have to play first using specific prologue investigators, and that scenario is what we're starting with this week as we play Disappearance at the Twilight Estate. After this scenario is over, I'll have the actual intro to campaign where we'll meet the investigators who will go through Circle Undone. For now, let's set the scene for both the, for the Circle Undone campaign and for this scenario. Circle Undone intro. Death is only the beginning. The hidden cults to which these witches belonged often guarded and handed down surprising secrets from elder, forgotten aeons and it was by no means impossible that Keziah had actually mastered the art of passing through dimensional gates. H.P. Lovecraft, The Dreams in the Witch House. Scenario Zero, Prologue, Disappearance at the Twilight Estate. Sunday, November 22nd, 1925, Arkham, Massachusetts. Though All Hallows' Eve is nearly a month past, a grim melancholy lingers throughout the town. Each morning, a thick fog permeates the streets. Nights are beginning to grow longer, and if you ask around town, you'll hear people swear that it's getting darker, too. But despite the gloomy mood, progress continues in the sleepy town of Arkham. The election, the election of Nathaniel Rhodes to the United States Senate has put upstanding members of the community feeling optimistic about the town's future. And tonight, at his well-appointed estate in French Hill, a man named Joseph Meyer hosts the Silver Twilight Lodge's charity gala, an annual members-only event that will turn deadly for several attendees. Each investigator, each player must choose one of the following neutral investigators to control for the duration of this prologue. Gabriella Mizra, Jerome Davis, Penny White, or Valentino Rivas. Throughout this prologue, you will play this through this character's story and make choices that will determine his or her fate. Your choice of investigator has no direct effect on your standard investigator deck, though the results of, your, of the prologue will influence the story. Do not assemble an investigator deck for any neutral investigator. Instead, gather the cards listed on its reverse side. These cards will be used in that investigator's unique setup. All listed cards are level zero unless otherwise noted. If there are three or fewer players in the campaign, in the missing persons pro section of your campaign log, cross out the profiles of any of the neutral investigators who were not chosen. Proceed to intro. Now, all the setup instructions it was telling us to choose the neutral investigators and gather the cards on the reverse side, all that good stuff. I've already done that all off camera. And once we meet each of the investigators that I've chosen for this scenario, we'll go through all of that in further detail. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's continue. Intro. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Meyer announces, raising a glass of champagne and a toast. A hush descends on the room until only the crackle of the fireplace and whispers of gossip can be heard. Allow me to welcome you all into my home for this year's charity gala. We have some very upstanding citizens here tonight, and I thank all of you for your hard work and generosity. Cheers and murmurs of agreement fill the room. Many of the guests raise their glasses to Valentino, one of the most esteemed members of the lodge this year, who sits at the guest of honor table, which is nearest to the fireplace. Joseph's assistant, Jerome, blends into the wall behind Joseph, discreetly checking his pocket watch. In another corner of the room, the head housekeeper, Penny, walks from table to table, filling empty glasses and collecting dirty salad plates. Each of you has done great deeds in the name of the Silver Twilight Lodge and our historic city, Joseph continues. Next year, we will continue to shoulder this burden and do what must be done for the sake of progress. Jerome steps forward quietly, interrupting Joseph's speech with the unassuming confidence that comes from years of trusted service. He taps Joseph lightly on his shoulder and shows him the time. I'm afraid I am already out of time. Thank you all very much for attending. Joseph concludes, bowing. Polite applause rises from the audience, and Joseph walks briskly toward the parlor, followed closely by his assistant. Two servants collect coats as latecomers trickle into the manor, and Gabriella, Joseph's head of security, watches over the, the entrance with hard eyes and a clenched jaw. Has Mr. Sanford arrived? Joseph asks curtly, tapping his polished leather shoe on the floor. I'm afraid not, just Joseph Jerome replies, flipping through the last pages of the estate's guest book. But he should be here any minute, Mr. Miger. Good. I want there to be no problems whatsoever when he arrives. Am I understood? Joseph calls out to Gabriella. Make sure he is well protected. 
Gabriella nods, patting the handle of her 45 inner shoulder holster. Joseph turns back to his assistant. And have Penny make sure the main course is kept good and hot while we wait for Mr. Sanford's arrival. Not a single slice is to be served without his presence. Not even for Mr. Rebus, sir, Jerome asks, glancing at Joseph over the rim of his thick glasses. Joseph pauses for a moment, considering. Pour Mr. Rebus another glass of champagne, and I'm sure he will not complain. Also, I'm still waiting on those accounts I asked you about earlier today. Don't forget, Joseph says, clapping his assistant on the shoulder before walking back into the banquet hall. Jerome nods obediently and heads upstairs. Soon after, the dark mist would appear, and nothing would be the same. One at a time, each player must proceed to the intro for their chosen character and read that section aloud. Do not read any intro for a character not chosen by a player. Once each player has read his or her character's intro, proceed to set up. Okay, so now we'll dive down and meet our, each of our prologue investigators. So let's do that now. Here's our first investigator that we've chosen for this scenario, Jerome Davids. Now, I did make an error on the audio recording where it should be Davids, not Davis. So we'll just straighten that out real quick. As we can see, his stat line is 2 Will, 4 Lore, 1 Combat, 3 Agility. Assistant, Silver Twilight are his traits. Reaction Ability, when an investigator at your location draws a treachery from the encounter deck, discard cards from your hand with at least with a total of at least 2 Lore icons, Cancel that card's effect. Limit once per round. Cancel that card's revelation effect. Limit once per round. His Elder Sign, plus one. Discover one clue at your location. He's got four health and eight sanity. I'll go through the scenario... I'll go through, through the investigator's specific setup in a minute uh, when I move over to the map. But let's take a look at his hand. So, as I mentioned be briefly, on the back of the, each investigator card for this scenario... There's not necessarily a deck, but there's a group of cards that needs to be assembled. So Jerome doesn't actually have anything starting in his play area, but here is his hand. First up, he's got... Curiosity. I think he's got... Yeah, he's got two copies of this. Comes with a will and a lore icon. When you have four more cards in hand, it gains another one of those. When you have seven or more cards in hand, seven or more cards in hand it gains two of each instead. So he's got that. Then he's got oh, just one copy of Deduction, which we saw Ursula use to great effect in the Dream Eaters campaign. Then he's got a copy of copy of Barricade. Attach it to your location. Non-elite locations can't move into attached locations. Forced. When an investigator leaves attached location, discard Barricade. Mind over matter. Ursula used this also in Dream Eaters. Uh, fast play only during your turn. One cost to play. Combat and agility on commit. Until the end of the round, you can only play this during your turn. It's a fast. Until the end of the round, you may use your lore in place of your combat and agility. Hyper awareness. Hyper awareness, which we saw, Ur which we also saw Ursula use. Lore and agility on commit. Spend one resource to get one of either stat for the skill test. Magnifying glass level one, it's a fast, you get plus one lore while investigating. As a reaction, if there are no clues on your location, return magnifying glass to your hand. A lens into a world can unseen can reveal things you wish it hadn't. Very thematic. Copy of connect the dots, four costs to play, two lore on commit, fast. Play after you discover the last clue at your location. Discover two clues at a location with a lower printed shroud value than your location. They thought you were being unreasonable, paranoid, delusional. Turns out you were right all along. Fingerprint kit, four cost to play, one lore on commit. Uses, three supplies. As an, exhaust, as an action, exhaust fingerprint kit and spend one supply. Investigate. You get plus one lore for this investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at your location. And it takes up a hand slot, as does the magnifying glass. And... Working a hunch. Two costs to play. Two lore on commit. Fast play only during your turn. Just discover one clue at your location. So that will do it for Jerome. His, as I mentioned, his investigator card caused us to do specific things to the map at the start of the scenario. Which we'll go through that when we move over to the map. But that will do it for Jerome. Let's move over and meet his partner for the scenario. 
I lied. We're actually not ready to go meet Jerome's partner yet because we've got to learn about his intro. So let's go ahead and do that now. Jerome intro. You carefully flip through the pages of Mr. Meyer's ledger looking for the accounts he inquired about. You have served Mr. Meyer faithfully for almost a decade and he trusts you with sensitive information like this. A point of pride for you. While you are often curious about your employer's business, you have never pried into his personal matters. Not until tonight, anyway. You adjust your glasses and lean forward as you turn to the page regarding Mr. Meyer's request. Some of the names on the list you recognize. Rivas, Gensler, Fairmont, Rhodes, Wick. But many are names you have never heard of before, let alone seen affiliated with Mr. Meyer's work. Lindquist, Konstantinov, Magro, Atkinson, Lamar. Just how deep do Mr. Meyer's connections go? Strange as that may seem, it is the list of names on the page afterward that raises, your, that raises your hackles. While it is clear that the names on the previous page are associates of Mr. Meyer's, or at least prominent members of the Lodge, you can only assume that this next series of names is of people your employer is targeting. For what, you cannot say. You stand next to Joseph's desk and record the list in your pocket journal carefully making sure to keep the na names in the exact order they appear in Mr. Meyer's ledger. You hope that your suspicion is nothing more than the absurd imagination of an overworked secretary. Still, something about all of this has you concerned. That and a sudden draft of frigid air that has somehow wafted into the room. Your gaze naturally drifts to the window, at which point you scream out in shock and lose your balance, stumbling backward into Mr. Meyer's desk. Pressed up against the office window is a host of screaming faces emerging from the mist, or perhaps composed of it. Their ghostly hands press against the glass, their eyes hollow and empty. Your reading glasses clatter to the ground and shatter under your heel as you scramble to the other side of the office. You don't realize that you've dropped your pocket journal in the chaos until it is too late. Okay, that will do it. Now that will do it for Jerome. Now we're ready to go meet his partner. Here's Jerome's partner for this prologue scenario, Penny White, the housekeeper. We'll bring her up here, because she does have a few cards in her play area that she starts with. So here's Penny White. Joseph's housekeeper. Her stat line is four will, one lore, three combat, two agility. Her reaction, after you succeed at a skill test during a revelation effect, discover one clue at your location, limit once per round. Elder sign, plus one. If this is a skill test during a revelation effect, you may take an additional action during your next turn. Seven health and five sanity. So, like I said, Penny has a few cards that she starts with in her play area. So first we'll take a look at her copy of Dig Deep. So two costs to play, Will and Agility on Commit. It's a survivor card, and it's a skill dump, similar to what we've seen before. This one just gives you Will and Agility for the skill test. She also has two item assets that she starts with. A knife, one cost to play, a combat on Commit. As an action fight, you get plus one combat for this action. As an action, you can discard knife from play. Fight, you get plus two combat for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage, and it takes a hand slot. Last up in her play area, she has a copy of Flashlight. Uses three supplies, but she only has two to start with. As an action, spend a supply to fight. Your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. And I should also mention, if you're looking at the play areas, Jerome started with three resources, Penny started with two. Pay no attention to the class action icon, the class actions up above each investigator. That does not represent what, cl what classes of investigators I've actually chosen for this campaign. That's just to help me keep track of actions like normal. So, anyway, Penny's starting hand. Then we'll go through her intro after this. She starts off with two copies of Able-Bodied. It's a, a combat and a, an agility on commit. When you control two or fewer item assets, Able-Bodied gets another combat and agility. While you control two or one or fewer, it gets two of each instead, in addition to the one that, were, that are provided as baseline. Then we have two copies of Act of Desperation. A zero cost to play, two combat on commit. As an additional cost to play Act of Desperation, Choose and discard an item asset that takes up at least one hand slot from your hand or play area. Fight. You get plus X combat and deal plus one damage for this attack, where X is the chosen asset's printed resource cost. 
If you succeed in that asset was in your play area, gain X resources. Then we have another copy each of Flashlight and Knife, which we looked at earlier. We have a copy of Lucky, one cost to play, fast. Play when you would fail a skill test. Get plus two skill value for that test. And last up, we have the Stray Cat. One cost to play, it's an ally. As an action, as a reaction, discard Stray Cat to automatically ev evade a non-elite enemy at your location. One health to play, and one health on Soak. He never came if you called for him. It always seemed like he had his own agenda. Anyway, that will do it for Penny. Let's play her intro first, and then we'll start going through everything else. Penny intro. You sigh as the cool New England air embraces you. It has been a very stressful night. You're stressful enough that you've decided to sneak away from the clamor to grab a quick smoke before heading back to work. You rest your arms along the metal railing of the balcony, your fingers trembling as they hold your cigarette. The dreary gambrel rooftops and Victorian manners of French Hill span the view below you, the unlit windows hiding countless secrets. You can't remember a night in which your employer was as concerned with his every little detail as he is tonight. He's normally so calm, so collected. There's something special about tonight that has him on edge. Is it Mr. Sanford? A shudder crawls through you. For some reason, something about that man gives you the creeps. But Joseph has interacted with Mr. Sanford many times before, so that cannot be the reason. What, would it, what could it be that has Mr. Meyer so worried? You are torn from your thoughts by the gathering of gray clouds overhead, swiftly blotting out the night sky. As the clouds grow ever closer, you begin to see shapes emerging from the vapor. You squint and lean over the railing for a better view. That is when you notice the true forms of the shapes in the mist. Their screaming faces, their clawing hands, all writhing in torment and coming straight for you. You cry out in terror and back up against the wall as the mist envelops the building. A spectral shape emerges from the haze beyond the railing, dressed in bloodstained rags. It begs for rest in a croaking, gasping voice. Your only hope for escape is to retreat back into the manor and call for help. Valentino intro. Oh, shut up. Okay. So... Yeah, moderately depressing. Now we're going to start talking about the scenario itself. And to transition into that, pe part of Penny's setup actually had her spawn an enemy engaged with her. So Penny has a Wraith engaged with her. Two's all across the board. Two combat, two health, two agility. Just a quick refresher. Two combat is the value you need to beat on a combat test to do damage to it. The middle number, the, the middle number is how much health the enemy has. And the agility, the evade value, is what you need to beat to be able to evade it. Alright, Monster Geist Spectral. Hunter, which means it'll move after an it'll move after an investigator. Forced. When Wraith is defeated by damage except from a spell or relic, instead of discarding it, attach it to its location. Attached location gains haunted. Spawn Wraith at this location. Two horror on attack. So haunted is actually a new keyword that you come across in Circle Undone. There are cards in the encounter deck that will tell you to resolve haunted effects. So anything that has that bold keyword haunted on it will have to be resolved when, some, when something forces you to resolve haunted effects. But anyway, that will do it for Penny, for our, pro our prologue investigators getting set up. And we've actually started to set up the larger scenario, so let's move back up top and continue that. All right, we are back up top, so we'll go ahead and start with the act first. Just checking something here. Okay. All right, so Act 1A. The disappearance. Something terrible has invaded the home of Joseph Miger. In the moments that follow, you scramble to survive. Forced. When an investigator is eliminated, place each of that investigator's clues on this act instead of his or her location. Objective. Discover as many clues as you can before your inevitable demise. So, yeah, we're not getting out of this one alive. And the agenda, Judgment 20, time, there is no escaping fate, hear the call and be reborn, forced, after doom is placed on any card and the agenda counts, each investigator must take either one damage or horror, two or two if there is five or more doom in play, forced, when any investigator is defeated, that investigator must advance this agenda, do not remove any doom from this agenda when it advances. That is part of Penny's scenario-specific setup, 
we also started with a card in play next to the agenda deck. Whispers in the Dark. Each location gains Haunted Take One Horror, Forced. When the round ends, discard Whispers of the in the Dark. Hush, child. It will all be over soon. Wow, this is getting more and more depressing as we go on. But anyway, that will do it for the Act and Agenda. Now let's move over and see our starting map. Alright, here's our starting map. We have all spectral locations on the board. So... Let's start off with our enemy, with our big enemy at the entry hall. Spectral, the Spectral Watcher, you are its prey. 353, Ancient One Spectral Elite. Alert Hunter. What alert means is if you try to evade it and fail, you'll get attacked. Force, when the Spectral Watcher is defeated, instead of discarding it, heal all damage from it, disengage it from all investigators, and exhaust it. It does not ready during the upkeep phase this round. There is no escaping fate. One damage and one sanity on attack. Now we'll go through our relevant locations. First, we'll go, visit, we'll pay, we'll go pay Jerome, Jerome a visit up in the hot, up in the office. As part of his scenario specific setup, we spawned two cards up up there. So we grabbed another mist, which thankfully is aloof. Three four three. It's looking for the investigator at the location with the most clues. Aloof and Hunter. What Aloof means is it won't automatically engage to an investigator. Nethermist's location gains Haunted. Nethermist attacks you. We beseech the dead, but do we really wish to see them? Victory 1, one, and one, one health and one sanity on damage. And we also have a copy of Obscuring Fog. On a revelation attached to your location, limit 1 per location. Attached location gets plus 2 Shroud. Forced. After attached location is successfully investigated, discard Obscuring Fog. Now let's go ahead and, after all that, actually take a look at the location that we're at. So, the office. The lone door atop the second floor staircase has rotted and decayed as though hundreds of years have passed. The once polished oak is now stained and warped. It could collapse at any moment. Oh joy. And now let's see what the revealed side looks like. Shroud of four, four clues, which is actually six. A shroud of six because of obscuring fog. Haunted. Choose and discard a card from your hand. A thick, oppressive haze fills what was once an impressive office. Cracks fork up and down the wooden paneling of the walls, and the bookshelves surrounding Joseph's desk sag with the weight of rotten, decayed books. Victory two. So I'll get the four clues for that. There we go. All right, there are four clues. Yeah, I think Jerome's going to have some work to do there, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now we'll go pay Penny a visit over in the balcony. Balcony. A, bu a, sh a shattered glass door leads onto the balcony outside the estate's master bedroom. On the revealed side, Shroud of One and Two Clues. Haunted. Each of, your loca each of your cards with health takes one direct damage. Clouds of dark mist loom above French Hill. Spectral shapes sur surround the balcony, moaning and writhing in torment. So we'll get our two clues for that. Alrighty then. So I think our, so our scenario is all set up. And with that, at long last, we're, getting, we're ready to get into this scenario. So let's go ahead and start with... Uh, we'll start with, I think we're going to start with Penny and we'll move down to her play area. Here's Penny. For action one, we are going to try to evade the Wraith, and we're going to commit a copy of Able Bodied. Which gives us two agility icons, because we control two or fewer item assets, which will put us up two. I'll go ahead and remove that from the game. So, up two. Alright, a zero lets us evade the wraith. So we'll put that there. Action two. 
I think we'll go ahead and investigate. Uh, we'll just we'll investigate it even. Why not? This could be a bad idea, but we'll see how it goes. Minus one doesn't work. And then Penny's third action will take us over to the map. Penny's third action will bring her over to the master bedroom. But anyway, let's take a look at the master bedroom. This unmarked door is old and partially rotted, set in a quiet corner of the upstairs hallway. A thick, dark fog seeps beneath the door and walk, wafts around your feet. We'll take a look at the revealed side. Shroud of three, three, two clues. Haunted, place one of your clues on master bedroom. Tendrils of black mist have invaded every corner of this room from the open balcony doorway, causing the furniture to decay and collapse. Every piece of wood and glass is shattered and warped. Nothing is untouched. Victory one, which isn't going to be relevant for this part of the campaign. But anyway, there are our two clues. That was Penny's last action, so that will do it for her. Jerome, I think we're going to stay right here because most of his turn is going to be at the map anyway. So for a fast action, we'll actually start off by playing his... Where is it? Here it is. His copy of Magnifying Glass, so that gets us plus one lore while investigating. Remember, we're going to need to hit a six to try to, invest, try to investigate that. But, let's see what we can do with that. So, we will... So for action one, we will try to investigate, and we'll commit curiosity. One, two, three, four, seven, eight. All right, so we'll commit curiosity to give him plus, because we have eight cards and eight other cards in hand, we get plus two Lawrence. But we get plus two lore instead of, in addition to the one that we have up here. So we are at five, six, seven, eight to six. We're up two. And here's the media resource, or the uh, cast bag. So up to. And let's take a look at what a skull is. Oh. Skull is minus three, and you if you fail, and this is an attack or evasion attempt, Resolve each haunted lo ability on your location. So unfortunately, we did fail that. Actually, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we failed, unfortunately. And for action two, we'll run that back, and this time I'll commit both deduction and curiosity. So I'm up. So this time I'll be up three. Deduction, as we recall, is if you succeed while investigating a location, discover one additional clue at that location. Once again, the skull is minus three, but this time we succeed because we committed one more icon. So we get two clues. Obscuring fog can get bent. And then for action three, <clears throat> um, I think we'll just go ahead and run that investigate back again, up one. <sighs> three skulls in a row. Fantastic. All right, anyway, that will do it for Jerome. I will get these out of the way. So that will do it for Jerome. Enemy phase, the hunt of the Spectral Watcher moves up to the Victorian Halls. And then that will do it for the enemy phase because nobody's engaged with an enemy. The Wraith readies, and then we'll move back up, and once we ready the investigators, we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. We're back up top for the upkeep phase. I'll go ahead and reset all of our action indicators. So Penny's all reset, as is Jerome. But each of them will gain a resource and go up to three. 
And because we don't have a deck, we don't actually get the draw part of what I like to, what I've termed as resource draw. But we also get to get rid of Whispers in the Dark at the end of the round. Mythos phase, Doom will go up to one. And then each investigator will take, I think Jerome will actually take a Sanity, will take a Horror, and, P and Penny will take a Damage. So that's how we'll do that. Now we actually have Mythos cards. Come on. Oh, I think it's should be damage on top, sanity on bottom. Yep, that's how that goes. So now that we've, we've got that straightened out, now let's go ahead and start into uh, what you call into Mythos cards. Jerome will be the lead investigator for this scenario. He will draw. Fate of all fools as a peril. I have to decide to choose one. If there's no other copy of Fate of All Fools in play, put it in your threat area. An investigator with another copy of Fate of All Fools in his or her threat area takes two direct damage. Place one Doom on another copy of Fate of All Fools. So, we put this into play in Jerome's threat area. Fantastic. And Penny's Mythos card. Terror in the Mists. Test Will 3, or Will 4. If you fail, put Terror in the Night into play next to the Agenda deck. If you fail by three or more, Terror in the Night gains Surge. If there are three or more copies of Terror in the Night next to the, the Agenda deck, discard them and each investigator takes three Horror. Yowza. Alright, so right now we are down one. Um... I think we'll spend a resource just to end up, dig deep just to get to even. So we'll go ahead and at least test it even. Oh, okay. A zero clears it then. All right. Okay, that will do it for the mythos phase. So now we're back into the investigation phase and our first investigator will be uh, yeah, I th mm. yeah, I think it'll be Penny, and we'll move over to the map. Alright, we're back over here at the map. Penny is going to be our first investigator this round, down here in the master bedroom. So for action one, she's going to spend a charge off of her flashlight to investigate the master bedroom, bringing this shroud down to one, and this test to an even test. A zero gets her a clue. Nicely done, Penny. Action two, we'll run the flashlight back, still at even. Skull says, not a chance. And then action three, she will move in and engage, she'll move into the Victorian halls and engage the Spectral Watcher. So we'll move that over to her threat area. Then we'll take a look at the Victorian halls. The warm rays that once illuminated these halls have faded into beams of cold, gray moonlight that shine through floating motes of dust and whips of dark mist. Take a look at the revealed side. Victorian Halls, Shroud of Four, No Clues. Haunted, Lose One Action. A haunting stillness lingers through the frigid, dead halls. The many paintings that adorn the walls have faded and become unrecognizable, and the metal structures flanking the corridors have, been, have completely rusted over. Alright, so that will do it. So that was Penny's last action, so that will do it for her. Jerome, we're actually not going anywhere because we are right here at the map as well. So Jerome is going to, for action one, he's going to take a resource, go up to four. And for action two, he's going to investigate up one.
Plus one gets him a clue. Action two. Uh... Oh, no, this is action three. I forgot he, had, he took a resource because I've got a little bit of a plan. We'll see how well this goes off. But we're going to investigate still up one. Minus two says no. That's unfortunate. But we tried. The plan may the plan may still go into effect next turn. But we'll have to see about that. So that will do it for Jerome. Enemy phase, Penny does get hit for one damage and one sanity. So there's the one and one. The, the damage Penny took earlier will flip into a two. And that will turn into a, then a one sanity will join it. And that will do it for the, oh, and the Wraith also does move because it is a hunter. All right, that will do it for the enemy phase. Now we'll reset everything. Then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. We're back up top for the upkeep phase. Jerome will gain one resource and go to five. Penny will gain one resource and go to three. I did remember to put Penny's clue that she discovered on her player tray. So we've handled that. Mythos phase. Doom goes up to two. Come on. There we go. Doom flips over to two. Jerome will take another sanity, go up to two on that. Penny will take another damage and go up to three. And for the Mythos cards, Jerome will draw. Watcher's Grasp. Uh-oh. Revelation. Heal three damage from the Spectral Watcher. Ready the Spectral Watcher. It moves, engages, and attacks as if it were the enemy phase. Through the, throughout the resolution of this effect, the Spectral Watcher gains Prey You. Normally I would hesitate on taking an attack, but because it attacks as if it was the enemy phase, that means it will exhaust at the end of the attack. So... We've healed, we, so there was no damage to heal from it. So it's actually going to move over to... Oh, uh, wait a minute. And attacks as if it were the enemy phase. Um... No, I think we are actually going to cancel that. So I'm going to discard... I'm going to discard my working a hunch to that, to cancel that card's revelation effect. So we'll get that out of the game. And I forgot to reset the action indicators as well. So Watcher's Grasp actually doesn't happen. And then Penny's Mythos card. Trap Spirits. Test ag Revelation test agility 3. If you locate for each point you fail by, take a damage. If your location is haunted, as an additional commit, as an adi if you, your location is haunted, as an additional cost for an investigator to commit one or more cards to this skill test, he or she must resolve each haunted ability on this location. So if, as we look at the map, Penny is losing, will lose an action if I resolve the haunted card. I'm down 1. I think down one is unfortunately where I'm going to have to test. So down one. All right, so we take another damage, we're putting Penny up to four damage. And that will do it for the Mythos phase. Now we're back into the investigation phase, and we'll start off once again with Jerome, and our start of his turn will take him back over to the map.
All right, we're up here in shot with Jerome, who's still in the office. So for action one, we're going to run the investigate back. We're up one. A zero gets him the last clue. And I have something else I'm going to play from his hand for four resources as a fast. We're going to play Crack the Case. Fast, play after you discover the last clue at your location. Discover two clues at a location with a lower shroud, the lower printed shroud value than your location. They thought you were being unreasonable, paranoid, delusional. Turns out you were right all along. So we'll grab these two clues from the balcony that we're never going to again. Which gives Jerome a total of six clues. In action two, we'll move him down to the Victorian halls. Action three, we'll bring him over to the trophy room and we'll see what's waiting over here. Trophy room. Flanking this door are two riding deer heads mounted on the wall. They stare at you with hollow, dead eyes. That's the, un the unrevealed side. Now the revealed side. Shroud of two, two clues. Haunted, two, lose two resources. For each resource you can't lose from this effect, take one horror. Riding animal heads adorn this room's wood paneled walls. Once a display of power and sovereignty, now macabre displays of death and decay. You cannot help but feel their empty eyes drill through you as you explore the room. So we'll get the two clues for that. And then that will do it for Jerome. Now let's move over to Penny, and her turn will take us down to her play area. All right, here we are with Penny. Let's see if we can get away from this spectral watcher. Right now, we are down one trying to evade, which will be our first action. We'll commit able, or he'll commit her other copy of Able Bodied to go up one, and then I'll spend a resource in to dig deep to go up two. I'll actually spend two resources to go up three. Minus one evades the Spectral Watcher. So I'll put that on the Victorian Halls. <clears throat> Action two, we'll take a pot shot at, the, with it, at it with the knife, and we'll go, we'll commit act of desperation to go up three, and actually I did forget about, uh, never mind, we didn't have a clue to dis, wait, hold on, um, who had terrors, terror in the night? I think Terror in the Night was Penny, actually, and she was in the master bedroom at the time. So we actually do discover the clue from that location. I did forget about that. So yes, Penny did discover the clue at the master bedroom from succeeding at Terror in the Night. Sorry about that, I had to go through the the, the encounter deck discard pile to rem just remember that. But that was actually the last round that she did that. So this is a new round, and she failed Trapped Spirits, but there were no, no clues on her location anyway. So anyway, coming back to this. Action two. Oh, that's that's what I was going to do. Taking a pot shot at the Spectral Watcher with a knife, and committing Act of Desperation to go up three. Turn that off. Anyway, up three. Minus two puts a damage on the Spectral Watcher, which is probably just spite damage at this point. And then action three will take us, Penny's action three will take us over to the map. Action three for Penny right here will be to go join Jerome in the trophy hall. Anyway, that will do it for the investigation phase. Enemy phase, our two hunters move. 
That Victorian halls is very crowded. Uh, I do have a little bit of a plan though, but well, hopefully we won't get hosed here. Anyway, that will do it for the enemy phase. Now we'll start to ready every three ready everything, and we'll move back up top after I reset the actions, the action tokens. We'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. All right, we're back up top. Each investigator will gain one resource and go up to two. There. All right, that was a quick upkeep phase. Mythos phase. Doom goes up to three. Jerome will take another horror. Penny will take a horror this time as well. So Jerome's up to three sanity. Jerome's up to down to five sanity left. Penny's down to three sanity left. And then for Mythos card, Jerome draws. Fate of All Fools. An investigator with another copy of Fate of All Fools in play in his or her threat area. We'll place a doom on we have to place a doom on Fate of All Fools. Which makes us take another damage or sanity. Jerome will take another horror, go up to four san go down to four sanity. Penny this time will take a damage and go up to five go up to two health left. And then Penny will draw. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, still, I'm still kind of... The cough is the one thing from this cold that doesn't want to go away. Penny will draw. Obscuring Fog. Attach to your location. Attach to location gets plus two shroud. Attached. A, a, a forest. After attached location is successfully investigated, discard it. Actually, I think... Let me look. Total... Um... And it says Shroud of Four. No, I think we can let that go. I'm, I didn't want to, but I think we can. So we'll attach that to the trophy room. But anyway, that will do it for the Mythos phase. In the Investigation phase, our first investigator will be... Jerome. And we will move over to the map. All right, we are over here with Jerome. Both of our investigators are in the trophy room with the crowded Victorian halls right here. For action one, Jerome is going to investigate. Unfortunately, the best I can do is up one. Um, actually, I think we're going to commit... We're going to commit the fingerprint kit and go up two. Plus one gets us a clue and rid of obscuring fog, so that'll put Jerome up to seven clues. And then he will run the investigate back. This time he's up th up three. Zero gets him the last clue. And then action three, we'll move over to the billiards room. So let's see what we've got over here. From outside this room, you can hear the creaking of old wood and the patter of soft footsteps along the ground. That's the unrevealed side. Revealed. Shroud of three, two clues. Haunted. You must either discard an asset you control or take one damage. The game room's warmth and laughter have been replaced with a sort of sense of quiet dread. Tendrils of black mist slither from underneath the collapsed billiard table, twisting and swaying during the along the floor in a formless dance. So we get the two clues there. I'm not sure I like the as a for, as a former dancer myself. I'm not sure a formless dance is something that you really want to get into. But anyway, that's just me musing aloud. That will do it for Jerome. Now what's Penny doing? Um, ooh. Question is, do I send Penny into the fire, or? 
Ah, uh, yikes. Uh, maybe, maybe to buy Jerome a little bit of time? That seems very suicidal, though. Hmm. They may have to, though. Uh, Alright, Penny's gonna stay over here. We're gonna stay over here at the map. Action 1 is going to be to spend a resource to play a, play the Stray Cat. As a fast action, we can discard that to automatically evade a non-elite enemy at our location. Action 2... We will move over to the Victorian Halls, which gives her both the Spectral Watcher and the Wraith. And then action three. Um, let me think about this. Action three. Actually, I think we will... Uh, we'll attack the Spectral Watcher with the knife, and we'll commit our other copy of Act of Desperation to go up to. The problem is if this... I might just be... Eh, maybe not. I can buy... I, can, I think I can buy myself a turn here. A, a round. The skull is a minus three, so we actually fail that. Yep, we actually did fail three, four, five... Oh no, six! I did forget about the plus one on the knife to fight it. So we do deal with damage to the Spectral Watcher. So there's another damage going up on the Spectral Watcher. Then for action three... Actually, action one was to play the cat, action two was to move in, action three was to attack. Never mind. So I will, dis I will discard the stray cat, though, to automatically evade the wraith, because I just bite it this turn if I don't. So, Penny does, Penny will take one and one on the enemy phase. All of our hunters are central, centralized on Penny right now. So there's our one and one. Penny will go up to six, we'll go down to one health left and two sanity left. And then that will do it for the enemy phase, which means the Wraith will ready and re-engage the Penny. We'll reset Jerome's mini card, and then we'll move back up top for the upkeep phase. We're back up top for the upkeep phase. We'll reset the action indicators. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Jerome will gain one resource and go up to three. Penny will gain one resource and go up to two. And that's a very short upkeep phase. Mythos phase, we go up to five doom in play. And because we now have five in play, each investigator has to take two damage or two horror. Unfortunately, Penny is going to bite it. So, so I can have the Jerome take two horror and he'll survive. Penny, however, will bite it. She'll take two horror, but that'll bring up to exact, exactly five. Uh, when, every, when an investigator is eliminated, place each of their, we go up to the act, place each of their clues when an investigator is eliminated, place each of that investigator's clues on this act instead of his or her location. So we'll take Penny's two clues that she's discovered. And we will bring those. Come on, focus on them. Good enough. All right, so there are the two clues going up toward the act. And now Penny, okay, so everything engages from Penny. She was over at the Victorian Halls. So everything disengages from Penny. And now Penny has to advance the, 
agenda as well. So in the missing persons section, okay, your demise. In the missing persons section of your campaign log, next to your character's profile, make a record of that character's fate as follows. Then flip this agenda by back over. If you were defeated by the Spectral Watcher's attack, it was not. Uh, if you were defeated by a monster's enemy's attack, it was the Penny was not. If there were seven more uh, Doom in play when this agenda advanced, and you were defeated by damage by horror or damage dealt by the forced ability on agenda one A, there was only five in play. If you were defeated by any other effect, record character's name was pulled into the spectral realm. So Penny was defeated by the forced effect on was defeated by the forced effect on the agenda. So that means we record because there were seven or more doom in play, which there was only five. So we record so Penny was pulled into the spectral realm is what we record. So I will go off camera and record that. There's my pen. So Penny was pulled into the spectral realm. All right, which means we're done with which means we're done with Penny for the scenario. So we flip this agenda back over. Jerome's Mythos card. Crypt Chill. On a revelation, test Will 4. If you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. If you can't, take 2 damage instead. Ugh, we are down 2? Do we have 2 Will icons, or 2 Lore icons in hand? We do, but... Hmm, this is a tough one. I'm deciding if I'm going to discard two will icons. I'm down two. Ick. Can he take an attack? Um, actually, we might be able to survive this. So, I will actually take the test. As much as I probably shouldn't. I can lose the magnifying glass. I'm not going to be happy about it, but I can. Down two. Alright, minus two. So, yes, I lose the magnifying glass, which is unfortunate, but... There's really nothing I could have done about that unless I wanted to discard two cards, and the two cards I had are going to be key, I think, here. So, anyway, that will do it for Jerome, and now that will do it for the Mythos phase. So we'll move over to, Jer over to Jerome, and our first, and we'll actually head over to the map. Alright, so Jerome is over here and shot in the billiards room. I'll grab Penny out of the way here. Action one, we're going to investigate, but we're only up one. So this is not a good spot for me to be in right now. <clears throat> Minus two says no, sir. <clears throat> Action 2 will investigate again. Fill up 1. Ah, this is actually very nice. His elder sign is... Come on, there we go. As we recall from earlier... The Elder Sign is plus one and discover one clue at your location. So that actually gets us both clues out of there. Which brings him up to ten. And action 
three <clears throat> will be two for two resources. We'll actually play as hyper awareness, his skill dump. So that will do it for Jerome. And, okay, the spectral watcher was over here. So enemy phase, everything moves over here, over to the billiard, tr over to the trophy room, I should say. And then that will do it for the enemy phase. We'll just stay right here for the upkeep phase. Everything will ready. Jerome will gain a resource, go up to two. Doom will go up in the mythos phase. Doom on the agenda will go up to six because we have five in play. Jerome will take two damage. And then his mythos card. Shapes in the mist. Surge. Resolve each haunted card on uh, each haunted ability on your location. So I either discard an asset I control or take a damage. I'll get rid of the hyper awareness I just played. And then we still have another mythos card to go through. So Surge. Trapped Spirits. Uh-oh. Revelation test agility three. For each point you fail by, take a damage. If your location is haunted, as an additional cost for an investigator to commit one or more cards to the skill test, he or she must resolve each ability on this each haunted ability on this location. So I either have to discard a card I control or take a damage. I'm at even, and I think that is where I will test. Minus two means I actually take, for each point I fail by, so I take two damage. <clears throat> Which means Jerome is defeated by damage, so we have to advance the agenda. All right, so Jerome was defeated by any other effect, so Jerome was pulled into the spectral realm as well. So Jerome was pulled into the spectral realm. All right. So now that both investigators have been defeated, now we will move back up top and resolve and, and wrap up this scenario. All right, we're back up top, so let's go ahead and wrap this scenario up. No resolution was reached because each investigator was defeated. Mr. Sanford, thank you so much for coming. I know you're a busy man. Your presence at tonight's meeting is very much appreciated. Joseph shakes Carl Sanford's hand firmly as he speaks. Sanford merely nods. I know you've only just arrived, but I have some private matters to discuss with you, if that is all right. Joseph continues, his narrow eyes shifting back and forth between the men flanking Mr. Sanders. Very well. That should be Sanford. The man nods to his two enforcers who step aside to give him privacy. He cradles his head behind hands behind his back, a statue, his stature impressive for his age. His discerning eyes fall on Joseph. What is the matter? Joseph leans closer. It's here, sir. It's here in this very house. There's a quiet pause between the two men, and then Carl Sanford smiles. No experience is earned for this prologue. In your campaign log, record X pieces of evidence were left behind. X is the total number of clues on Act 1A, The Disappearance. All right, so I actually never moved Jerome's clues up to up to the act, but I did end up having 10 clues on Jerome. So two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, plus the two Penny brought up earlier. That means 12 pieces of evidence were left behind. So 12 pieces of evidence were left behind. All right, proceed. And each of the player cards used in this scenario to the collection. Each player chooses an investigator from a standard pool of investigators and assembles his or her investigator deck as usual. Proceed to scenario one, the witching hour. 
All right, that will do it for this scenario. We actually left 12 pieces of evidence behind. I'm not going to spoil how that's going to come into play later in the campaign, but it will come into play later in the campaign. So later this week, we'll have the intro where we meet the actual investigators for the campaign, and then next week, we'll have the first scenario for the campaign, The Witching Hour. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the, ver the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, click the bell so you turn on notifications and get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care, everyone.